okay um so welcome to this session and this session we're just going to cover it's just going to be a summary of everything that we've done regarding um object oriented programming so we're just going to cover the basics of some of the things that we discussed and create like a simple example so uh, we're going to use uh, a system that has multiple users right so that will be a way that we can display we can show both uh inheritance encapsulation and polymorphism so um the first thing i'll do here is just to create a new package i'll just call this op then within this package i can now create um what i'll do is i'll create an interface so i'll just select class then I'll just call this authentication interface so like we said an interface is just uh, a form of contract between a class that implements that interface so it will have some set of behaviors and properties that will believe that a uh, a particular class you have then you create an interface for that so whichever class um, implements that particular interface has to implement the behaviors of that particular um, interface so um it helps us makes our make our code more modular and easier to and, and easier to extend when we want to add more features so in this case in our authentic authenticatable we just want authentication so we just want to return true or false authenticate and we have we just pass in one argument so we just use password to authenticate right so once we have our interface we need a class that implements this interface so we come here and we create a new um, class so we just call this user so um, if you look at the word user right it just describes a generic user it doesn't tell us what type of user this person is it doesn't give you any information it's just a user so this class itself is abstract by definition so it being abstract just basically means this is a generic user right it has no other description so all everyone on the system is a user right and we'll go a st step further to actually describe the difference between all these users so we declare this as an abstract class so if you remember we said abstract class are not uh, are classes that can have abstract methods so an example of an abstract method is this it's a method that has no body it has no implementation it just has a definition and that's it so in an abstract class we can have um we can have both concrete methods and we can have abstract methods so our generic user now is going to implement that particular interface that we discussed that we just created right so it's implementing this authenticatable interface so once we have that we're now going to create um, string we have just called this username we have another private string password so we've created these two uh, attributes of this particular class right of this user class so all our users are expected to have at least a username and password and that's what we need to authenticate them now um to be able to access our our private attributes because right now they are completely encapsulated we need to use uh getters and setters right so if you remember from our our class um previously on encapsulation you need getters and setters to be able to um, access or update private member so what we're going to do is we're going to have um, public so we say get so we just create um, the getter for the username so we want to keep this encapsulated encapsulated 
So by keeping the password itself encapsulated because we don't want to have access to it, right? Like I said, this is just a simple example. So another thing we want to do is we want to create a constructor for our user. So the constructor is used to initialize the user. So whenever you are creating a new user, the user will have to supply the username and they have to supply their username and password. So let's say you are trying to log in the user. At least you would have retrieved the user's username and password. Then lastly, for this class, well, not lastly, but we are going to now override. Um, we are now going to override this um, authenticate authenticate uh, method, right? So um, we are now going to override this authenticate method. So we are using this now as uh, a form of polymorphism, right? So we have uh, both dynamic and static polymorphism. Like we said, you can have uh, either method overloading or method overriding. So in this case, we are overriding the method from this interface. So by us overriding this method now, we can now give it some form of logic. So if you like, we can just say this password password that is passed right so we're checking if this password equals the password that is supplied here so we're checking if the passwords match then it's going to return true or false which is a boolean right then lastly we want to now create an abstract method already within the user class so we are creating an abstract method so when creating an abstract method within an abstract class is you define it using the keyword abstract but if it's in an interface you don't have to specify that it's an abstract because you can only have abstract methods in an interface so now we have um we have our abstract user class created right the next thing we have to do now is to create concrete users now what type of users we have on our system we have maybe admin and we have maybe students or something like that so now we're just going to create an admin uh, we just call this admin user and the admin user is now going to extend user so it's inheriting from this user class so we're going to inherit all these properties and behaviors right so first going to create a constructor so we've created a constructor to initialize our admin our admin uh, class then I think we need to implement some of those methods yes so we need to implement get permissions so because that's the abstract method that we have uh, here. So since we are inheriting from the abstract class, we have to implement its, uh, the abstract method. So we can just return uh, all permissions. So maybe the admin has all permissions. The admin can do whatever they want to do, right? So now you have, so you have this all permissions and we've granted the admin user um, every permission within the application and just like we discussed previously you can also have conditions you can say if get username equals let's say chic else return So, so since we are implementing the the inherited method, right? Since we are inheriting this, we can add further logic just to check. 
not just returning this so you can perform all your you know validation here and so on so that's why i'm just adding this to show you instead of just returning all permissions we now say okay get the username so also if you look at it we can get username right but we can't um let's say we want to say and password we can't do get password because password itself is encapsulated we didn't create a getter for that we only created a getter for the get username so we can go further and say let's create a new let's say student just to call it student user for consistency so this is going to extend uh, user so we'll do the same thing we'll create a constructor for initializing the student and we are going to implement the get permissions method so for this we can just give them a simple read only so uh let me keep this side by side our admin user has um if the person is successful the admin user has all permissions otherwise if he's not successful you just say not an admin but if you are if the user type if it's a student then you just give them only read only permissions so generally when you are building systems these are some of the things you consider when working um with such um, ideas behind your mind like object oriented ideas so every student related activity can be added here every uh, uh, behavior or feature that every user needs can now be added to the abstract user class and automatically the admin and the student user inherit all those added uh, behaviors and attributes so um let's go further to our to our main class to our main dot java which is where we execute our code so we are just going to create a user we're going to call this admin user or admin and this is going to be a type of new user and we need um from our constructor here we need to pass in the username and password of the user so i'll pass in chic and i'll pass in uh let's say one two three four for the admin then we can have a user and this is a student so this will be new student and for this we can just say uh, and just say just say Sabinus and his password is 1111 like this so let me close this so that we can see the full code so we know that an admin or a student are all users so we can just use the same uh the same type so we're just saying user admin is a type of admin user and user student is a type of student user right so let's now um create a list so let's say user list users so we now add the admin and the student i just i'm just doing this so that we can iterate through and see um and see what we've inherited from the current classes so we can print that so we created two users an admin called with username shake and this is the password and we've created another user student um username sabinus and this is user's password so we've added these two users to this users list now so we can now iterate through this so we can now say for each user user in users So we can now do salt or sys out. So let's say user user dot let's say 
get username uh, get authenticated so let me just pass in this password so that when it verifies for the admin please it works then lastly we can now get the user permission so we can have this so if everything is okay let me just put this authenticated then we can now have permissions yeah so let's run this and see what we have in the as a result so if you look at this right for for the user chic the admin user it was authenticated and we have all permissions then the user sabinus was not authenticated because his password is one 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 while we we're saying that what we want to use to authenticate them is one two three four in an ideal situation obviously the password will not be here you'll be trying to verify from already registered password but you can see we can also read their um we can also read uh, their permissions so this user after being successfully authenticated has all permissions while this student user sabinus has read only so if you look at it we have an abstract user this is not a type of user on our system this is the parent uh, user class every user inherits from this so it's like being a human right you have the human class every person is a human then uh, from that now you can now generate specific types of humans like a man woman children and all that right so that's basically what we did so our user needs to be authenticated so we now have an interface that enforces that to say okay you have to implement the authenticatable interface and if you implement that interface it means um it means you now have to implement the authenticate uh, method so we implemented that using this to say okay if this dot password if the password supplied by the user matches the password we are trying to authenticate then we authenticate so the password we supplied here is one two three four so if the password here matches this one then the person is authenticated to through it returns through right and we get then we also got the user's permission so um after doing that um within our user class the minimum features we need for user is username and password and we said the password is encapsulated because we created a getter for the username so this one is completely encapsulated so for the username you can get whatever username is supplied but you can't set or change it so there's only there's read access only on the get user there's no write access so for the pass so for the password we have uh we don't have read or write access right so it's completely encapsulated you can only um once you've passed in a password it just performs its logic and returns the required result so lastly we created another an abstract method right within the abstract class which is public string public abstract string get permissions so that when our children the children of this class inherit from this they now have to implement this particular method which is what we have here so for this we change the logic a bit to say if the username equals chic then return all permissions else not admin so for the student it's a bit different we just get permissions and we just say the permission for this user is read only so let's say you are creating another user maybe an editor the editor just has to extend the users then it's not going to implement this then you can now write the specific features of the editor so i hope this summary really helps you guys get a clear picture of how these things work and how object-oriented principles helps reduces like rewriting several pieces of code